Hey guys, it's Chris from Dev Coffee, and as we start building out our Reddit API clone, we're going to need a series of different tooling, and one of those tools is going to be Babel to compile our ES2015 code. We're going to get into that right now. Okay guys, to get started, what we're going to do is just have a blank directory right here and have a text editor choice open with the directory. So I just have Adam, you can use Sublime or Notepad++, it doesn't really matter. Now, I have a blank GitHub repo here just because I'm going to be committing this code, so don't worry about that. You don't have to make a GitHub repo or anything if you don't want to. Uh, what our first step is, and then also another prerequisite, you have to have Node installed. If you don't know what Node is or how it works, this tutorial is going to be a little bit too advanced for you. So uh, just go ahead and pause this video, and I'm going to link Derek Bean's Node video below. He has an outstanding tutorial that explains every everything about Node and helps you understand it quite in depth. So I definitely recommend you watch that if you don't know what Node is. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna want to write some code that we know will fail because we want to get ES2015 working. So let's write some ES2015 syntax right here. So let's make a folder called server. Then inside there, we're gonna have an index.js file and then a test.js file. Now in the test.js file, let's, do, let's make a constant called test. And over here, we're just going to have it pass in a message string, and then we're just going to console.log the message. Pretty basic function. Then we're going to export it. Export default test. Okay. Now, inside of the index.js folder, we're going to import that test. Okay. And we don't have to do .js here. You can just, so dot .slash targets the current directory, and then we can just do slash uh, test. And if you want to, you can do .js, but it's a little bit redundant. And then let's run that method or function over here. Babel is working. Okay. So if I were to run this, let's put some exclamation marks, make it more urgent. If I were to run this, we would expect this to fail because again, node has some ES 2015 syntax <clears throat> built inside of it and they're trying to become more compliant. But again, not all the features will be uh, available that way. That's why we have to use Babel. But let's go ahead and run that script over here and do index or just index. There we go. So we went ahead and just ran that index.js file right here. And we'll see that we get an error that says unexpected reserve word import. That's because the language doesn't recognize that as actually being a function. We need to compile it. All right. So now that we know our goal is to get this to say Babel is working and to get this all running fine. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to install three different or four different packages rather uh, from NPM. So let's go ahead and NPM init our project. And you can just enter through all the options. And this should create a package.json file. And now let's start adding in our different dependencies. And I'll explain them while we go. So we're going to npm install Babel CLI. Now what Babel CLI is, is it's a way for you to compile files or directory of files uh, just by targeting them. So I would type in Babel the input file and then what I want outputted. So would I, you know, what, I want, what, what, what would I want the name of the file to be outputted? And I'll show you exactly what that looks like here in a second. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna use, and I think it's important to note that we're gonna be doing two different types of builds. We're gonna be having a development build, one that will be very, very efficient for development and then one for production. So if we wanted to push our code to production, we want it minified, we want it compiled all real nice, uh, we'll be able to do that. So this, this tool we're gonna be using primarily or actually exclusively for um, development and that's battle register. What this will do is this will compile all the files for us on the fly and have it there. All we have to do is just require it before we call our file that we want to be, or you know, our group files that we want to be compiled. And this is not practical in a production environment. So uh, I'll explain and show you exactly what that looks like. Then we want two presets. In Babel, you, you basically pull in these different presets that you want to define your Babel as. You can do React presets, React Native presets, uh, ES2015 presets, which we'll do in this instance. So we're going to do Babel preset ES2015. And then the next one we're going to do is Babel preset stage 2. Now, I, I could kind of explain the, sta the stages, but stage 2... JavaScript as a language has moved extremely, extremely slowly. So as a committee, they kind of got together and they want to start pushing out different features in the language. That's why we call it ES2015 and we're going to call it ES2017. And as they come out with features, every year it will get updated. Now, the, there's five different stages and each stage is it gets pushed. 
I'll have to explain the cycle, but essentially stage zero is kind of an unstable build of, of the new features. It might not get pushed in the language. And as it goes to stage one, it's more, you know, there might be some changes, but that it looks like it's going to get implemented into the language. And then by stage two, it's pretty sure that it's going to be implemented in the language. Stage three, even more so. And stage four is when they finally release the feature into ES, whatever that year is. Okay, so then we're going to save these right here. All right, and then while this is going, we're going to configure a Babel to use those two presets. What we can do is right on the root of your directory, make a new file called .babelrc, okay? And this is where we're gonna define all of our configurations. You can define plugins, presets, and a ton of different things that you can look through the documentation. But what we're gonna really focus on is setting those two presets. So it's just gonna be JSON-like format, or JSON format, and then we're gonna put presets, and then an array of strings, which will just be ES2015, and then stage two. All right, so I guess what we're technically kind of using ES2017 stage two, we're in having more features, but we'll just keep calling it ES2015 for right now. All right, now, this is not the only place you could do this. You can configure this inside of your package.json file, just like this. But I don't think that's a good idea because you know you tightly couple your package.json with your Babel. I think it's better to have the Babel RC file, which I recommend and a lot of people do recommend. Okay, so now that we have this set up, we're ready to start compiling with Babel. So let's compile our index.js file and see what that looks like. So to do this, you're gonna type in Babel, then you're gonna target the file, okay? And then I am going to do dash O, that's the output file, dash D will output a directory. So dash O and then server, and then I can name this whatever I want, but I want to put it inside the server file, and I'm gonna call this index.babel.js. Again, you can name it whatever you want here. So whenever I hit enter, we'll see something happen. We'll see that right here, I have the compile code working perfectly. So if I were to, uh, you know, we see Babel's working, and if I go over here, Babel is still working, and I save it, and then rerun it, we go over here, we'll see that it recompiled and it's working fine. But this isn't super practical because I don't want to just target one individual file. I want this to kind of do this dynamically as I run it. Okay. Um, again, we're not going to be using the Babel CLI for our development. Now you can, but uh, I do recommend using the Babel register for development. All right, to do that, let's go ahead and make a new file called bin. And in bin, we're going to make two different files, one called dev and then one called production. Now we're going to leave production blank for right now, but we'll configure that here in a second. And in dev, what we want to do is we want to require our Babel register. So all you have to do is require Babel dash register. Okay. And what this will do is this will import that, that node module and run it. And then we can just target where our entrance point is, which is in the server index.js. So let's do that. So we're gonna be in the current directory, then we're gonna go up one directory, go into the server directory, and then index. And we don't have to do .js. Okay, so now if we run this file, it should work. And we should see Babel is still working or whatever we console.log. So let's try that. Node, and instead of targeting the server dot slash index, we're gonna do bin dash dev. And we'll see there, Babel is still working. Now what that's doing is it's, again, compiling our code on, we don't see any uh, an additional folder here that has our compiled code. It's just doing it for us with the Babel register. Okay, so now this is working perfectly fine. I can start writing code in here. Like let's just say I wanna do a console.log, uh, more code. We see that it's, it's passing our test, that this code is running. All right, so now let's go on to our development build. Now, one thing that I do want to do um, is define a script over here in our package.json called start. So instead of having to do node bin slash dev, we can just do npm start, okay? And all we're going to do is bin slash dev. And let me just test it one more time. So if I do npm start, we'll see that that's running the exact same. Okay, so for the production, what we're going to want to do is a series of steps, right? We're going to want to compile our server file or our server directory rather, 
spit out a compiled directory, which we'll call it DIST, short for distribution. Now, if you were in actual practicality, what you would do is you would take that distribution folder with your compiled code and go host it on something like DigitalOcean or Heroku or whatever your host provider that you uh, prefer. So let's do that. So we're gonna make a script called uh, build. And what this is going to do is this is going to first make a directory, okay? Make a directory called DIST. And then with the double ampersand, this is again like saying, like if I were gonna run two different commands on the command line, or I guess the terminal in this instance, and I'm gonna do Babel. And then for Babel, I'm gonna target the server folder. And now there's a series of different presets you can do. Uh, one that I'm gonna be doing is dash S. This is short for source map. Now what a source map is, is whenever you compile your code, it could be very, very difficult to debug with it because if you ever see compiled code, it's all, there's no spaces, it's all running in one, uh, one long string, it just doesn't look nice. What a source map will do, will refer it back to the uncompiled code, so in debugging instances, you will know exactly what's going on and you can read it out. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is a dash D, and this, now we, we say what we want to, where, where do we wanna distribute uh, this output directory? And that will be at the DIST folder. Okay, and this should work. So let's go ahead and npm run build. And we'll see here that it compiled it for us, it should. So if we go over here, we have a DIST. We'll see the compiled code for our index.js and not only our index.js, but for our test.js. And we have the source maps for both of them right there. So now if I do node DIST slash index, you'll see that it's working the exact same. Now, this, is, this is getting really cool. So what we want to do is we want to make another script called production. And so, another problem that I'm going to see here is that if we ran this build again, we would have a existing DIST file. So we're going to want to remove that DS, DIST file so we can do a, a, a clean script here that all it will do, it will remove uh, the DIST file. And in, right before our build, we're going to do npm run clean. And then the and, so it will be doing three things. It'll be deleting the uh, DISC file, creating a new one, and then spitting out the compiled code. Now in the production, what we're gonna do is npm run build, and then we're gonna target that node bin slash production. And inside there, you might, you might have a good thought what we're gonna do here. We're gonna target that DIST index, okay? So let me run you through the series of steps before we run this code. What's gonna happen here is we're going to remove the file, the DISC file, if it exists, then we're gonna create a new DISC file, then compile the code into that directory. I've been saying file, I mean directory. And then we're uh, going to run, well, if we were doing this, we were gonna run that whole build and then node bin slash production should run this index.js file. I know that's kind of hard to follow, but this scales really well. I mean, like if we had a hundred different files here in the server file, it would do it for us. We wouldn't even have to think about it or configure it. We just configure it once and it just starts working. So npm run production. And let's go ahead and just write ourselves a quick message. Uh, production is still working. Okay. So now if we do this, we'll see it cleans, it builds. There we go. Production is still working. Now we can write any ES 2015, ES 2017, code that we want to and it's all configured. So guys, that pretty much concludes it. I know this was extremely fast paced and I kind of brushed over a few uh, topics, but as we start building our Reddit API clone, we're gonna have an awesome environment for doing so and doing it the most modern way possible. So until next time guys, I'm Chris Pena and uh, I don't know, I like cats too, I guess. They're all right. People let me tell you about my best friend She's a warm-hearted person who loved me till the end People let me tell you about my best